I'm very glad uh, to do this talk. And uh, right now I offer you to draw the opposite glance on the open API uh, documentation. Uh, who am uh, uh, I am, uh, oh, sorry, what, what happens here? Who am I? I'm Maxim Danilov. I am, I'm, I'm more than 26 years in commercial software development and nine years I worked with Python and Django and around six years I am also involved uh, in work with uh, different JavaScript uh, frameworks and also I got them multiple times, I won multiple times awards like a super mentor in engineering. All links to slide uh, you can find there uh, by QR code. And before I start, I want to say special thanks for my family for support, to my wife Elena, to my children Mark and Maya, and uh, thank you for my animals Marcel and Kisa. And also, I want to say special thanks to my daughter Maya. Thank you, Maya, because uh, she created all illustration for, for my presentation in last year. Thank you, Maya. And uh, right now we go to the, uh, our uh, documentation. Open API specification. What is it? Uh, this is a document which describes how I should create interface description for all our APIs. Uh, of course, uh, open, I, uh, open API specification is not the last or uh, not only once. We have alternatives like uh, API Blueprint. Uh, we create documentation in Markdown format. Uh, also, we can use RAML standards. Uh, we write uh, our documentation in YAML format and open API itself, uh, we write documentation in YAML format. All ideas which I described further, uh, you can apply to any um, specification arts, but I speak directly in this talk only about open API. Yeah. And <clears throat> why we need it? Uh, documentation uh, of expected uh, behavior of our APIs is important because it's like a contract. Uh, we can use this contract, this document, uh, to auto-generate code footer. We can create, uh, according to this document, clients. We can uh, create servers. We can create models. After, uh, we can use this document. We should use this document in... Um, test drive driven development if you use it in your company. And uh, also we use this document in tests. And also this document allows us to work independently. If I have uh, different teams who work with front end and with back end, these teams can use these documents like a source of truth for requests and for response. And if we go to the uh, OpenAPI website, we can see the motto. Properly defined open API specification allows both humans and computers to discover how to interact with remote server. And I select special words, humans, computers, and properly defined, because there is the problem in this sentence. In the, at first glance, human re readable open API YAML, in my opinion, is completely not human readable. Okay, it's readable but really not understandable. And for that, uh, we should, uh, I should use uh, additional tools, uh, visualization tools like uh, Swagger. Of course, in uh, this form, which we see on the right side, of course, it seems more understandable. Uh, instead of Swagger, we can also use Redoc. Uh, who use Redoc, uh, for example, here? And mostly use Swagger probably, right? Who is Swagger? Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, this is only a visualization tool, uh, which solves one problem, readability, but uh, OpenAPI specification has also other problem. At first, it's a formal standard for describe, describing uh, APIs. Formal standard means 
you can follow this standard or you can avoid to follow this standard. And I work with different, different, different uh, projects and I see many projects not keep uh, this standard uh, for description, API description. And this is a problem. The uh, next, uh, next uh, problem is different standards. Uh, because we have uh, OpenAPI specification version 2, OpenAPI sp uh, specification version 3, 3.1, and four months ago, uh, we also received a new sp version of specification with new name, Arazzo. And I, I only can uh, remember this meme, uh, OpenAPI uh, has four standards, and somebody from community OpenAPI say, Ah, for standards, we need one universal standard uh, which covers all uh, use cases. Yeah, we should create it. And we have the new standard, and we have five standards of open API specification, finally. And uh, the last problem, which I uh, not cover, but it's always exist, uh, automatically generated open API YAML file, never fully correct, according to chosen open API specification. Never. I have never seen the fully corrected uh, uh, YAML file. Okay, probably I have seen not too much. And uh, we are on the Python conference. That's why let's ask, um, what Python offer uh, us to work with uh, this documentation? Python and Open API, this is two friends, and uh, we have a Swagger editor. This is visual YAML editor, which help us to create YAML file documentation from scratch. Uh, cool tool, please use it. Uh, after that, we have Open API tools, mm, genius tools, which help me to create Python code from uh, YAML uh, file. It's easy, it's fun. I download, uh, I download uh, some uh, specification from, um, from PayPal uh, API and I cr can create the uh, client which can connect to PayPal uh, directly. It not works, but uh, I can create it. <laughs> Swagger user interface and Redoc. Uh, this is uh, this help us uh, to transform YAML file uh, to uh, deliver YAML file to human. Uh, we can add visualization and, for example, tools like uh, Connexion. This is paradigm like uh, codeless uh, server, uh, which uh, simply use uh, YAML like a documentation, and after that, uh, Connexion created for me, for example, server which already works. Incredible. Uh, I like this uh, technology. But how about Python code to YAML? For example, I have already existed project and I want to get documentation for existed project. In this case, in this case, um, uh, based on Python code, YAML document generated on server start can be refreshed later or by demand with special command. Um, in any uh, frameworks which I have seen in Python, uh, they use predefined uh, objects, annotations. For example, in FastAPI Lighter Start, I should use annotation in function, uh, which are later used to generate, auto-generate uh, open API uh, specification. In Django, Django REST framework, Django Ninja, Yask, uh, Spectacular, we use predefined attributes by classes and functions. And also, if I want to modify the schema which will be later rendered in YAML, I should additionally use different decorators for function, for special function um, like a get open API from fast API. I should use special classes only to define schema which later will be rendered in YAML. Somebody has problem to define manually schema and uh, uh, meet obstacles uh, because it was uh, really complex. Somebody knows this problem or not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
uh, it's not too much, but somebody understands what I mean. And sometimes we use also doc strings to uh, uh, extend uh, open up uh, open API documentation uh, YAML file. And for me, if I mm, uh, want to say shortly, it seems like a, like a monster which uh, later rendered in YAML. And it's really hard to work with that. It's really hard to extend and set up a uh, schema uh, object which will be later rendered. And right now I show you really example which uh, exists since 2014. We have one real project. This is big Django messy monolith with uh, 400 entry points. Some entry points wrapped in a micro Django services. Uh, about micro Django services, I have one poster in my hall, and after this talk, I should uh, make a poster talk. And Django, Django REST framework in this project, it seems like uh, not too hard, but later in this project appears Django Ninja. It means some um, uh, endpoints uh, realized with Django Ninja. And later, uh, not later, in, in between, uh, it was uh, some entry points realized on Flask, some entry points, many entry points uh, realized on FastAPI, and um, after uh, Starlight appears, some entry points was realized on Lighter Star. Lighter Star is new name of uh, um, new name of uh, Starlight, and <laughs> also in this uh, messy monolith used uh, some entry points on AWS Lambda and uh, two entry points used uh, Google Cloud Computing. And what if I want to create this? Uh, uh, I want to create one normal document. Uh, which document all APIs uh, for this project, which really exist, what I should to invent. In, in reality, it's, uh, it was a small horror, and let's see how I solve it or how I offer you to solve uh, it in your project. If we uh, throw a glance on the global infrastructure, we have uh, URL routing table, which Right now, placed on the uh, in uh, previously it was in Nginx. Uh, right now, it's placed in uh, Amazon, and uh, one route uh, goes to the YAML composer, which wrapped in a Swagger UI for uh, visualization. And uh, after that, uh, all re uh, requests goes on different cloud services or self-hosted services, and every service offer us one interface, which provide by demand uh, for us YAML file uh, directly for this one service. And how it works? If I want to get one YAML from a uh, whole in, in, uh, infrastructure of whole, from whole project, I go by, um, I request uh, um, this YAML file from YAML Composer. And YAML Composer send request for different services and collect YAMLs together. And after that, simply every YAML file merged in one YAML file. Uh, we need only, it's, uh, if we uh, start to see how it's organized, it's only two lines of code uh, we use for YAML Composer uh, Spectacular based on Django, and only two lines of code simply collect YAML files of, uh, according to the root table, and uh, after that we use always merge uh, from deep merge uh, library, and after that we render this YAML in one file. Of course, here we have a big problem. If we have in different services this model with the same name, the last model override previous models with the same name. In this case, please don't forget to add prefix accordingly to service. In this case, every model will be 
uh, will be uh, presented in uh, generated uh, huge YAML file. In reality, it's more than uh, than 20,000 lines uh, YAML file. It's uh, <laughs> it's huge. And uh, let's see further. We have. We have uh, YAML Composer from different services, and let's go deeper in uh, self-hosted, uh, in one service. If we go deeper, we can see one service has the root table or root collection, the special root organized for us uh, uh, service uh, from YAML Composer, and we have single uh, endpoints in this service. And uh, interesting is, right now, Django or Fla uh, Flask or FastAPI offer uh, us those um, type of uh, YAML generation. Uh, every endpoint end feed spe special object schema, which uh, later with method render generate for us YAML file. But some endpoints end cannot Mm, do anything. For these endpoints, we should have static YAML file, which later will be merged with YAML Composer, which wrap it in Swagger uh, user interface, and after that, this YAML file will be sent uh, by demand. And my opinion, it's completely wrong. Uh, I think these two elements in this schema, which existed in many, many, many objects, should be removed. And this is my opposite view for generation um, open API documentation. And what I offer? I offer you to remove it, and I uh, uh, offer you to create special interface in every single uh, endpoint, which generate for us YAML file only for this single entry point. Let's see how it works. Uh, we go deeper in one uh, single entry point, and what we see? Every entry point has method dispatcher, which check request method and uh, calls uh, accordingly the uh, handler for uh, method. For example, method post handler, method patch handler, and also we have method options. And what is method options? Uh, method uh, options in request, uh, we should provide options for given URL. Request should come without body, but response may has body. And it's safe and dependent, not cacheable, not allow it in HTML forms, but we don't need it. And I offer you to use or to extend options method, uh, hand, uh, handler for uh, options method, to generate YAML file. And how it works, for example, in FastAPI. In FastAPI, uh, again, it's simply if content type, uh, ask it content type, contains YAML, uh, I, un I send answer with, for example, static file. It's easy, and this static file contains only uh, documentation about this um, uh, about these uh, endpoints in, uh, about these handlers in single um, endpoint and uh, it's easy uh, to do again only two lines of code uh, but uh, what about automatic lead generation it's also able uh, I can uh, sorry uh, yeah, you know. uh, mm, I can generate YAML file for every uh, method handler. Uh, I can put this YAML file directly in doc strings. It seems ugly, but it works really easy. S a single YAML file only which describes, for example, post uh, behavior of post handler. And uh, mm, uh, again, it's only two lines of code. Uh, we go through all allowed methods in this entry point. 
and we collect YAMLs from docked strings, we merge it, and we throw it away uh, for uh, request method options in body. But uh, for my opinion, uh, to put directly YAML file in, uh, in doc strings, it seems not too usable. My opinion, we should use doc strings uh, for dynamic generated YAML, and every doc strings should, uh, use, uh, should be written in usual format. In restructured text, how it recommended by PEP, it can be apitex or javadoc style, it can be Google doc string style. I like probably this is my famous um, fav favorite uh, style of doc strings or NumPy docs also not too bad. We put this um, doc string. It's normal because if uh, somebody use Sphinx for document uh, documentation generation, who use Sphinx? Yeah, it means it already works for you. This suggestion. And uh, we use normal doc strings. Advantages of uh, doc strings in usual form, we can use it also for Sphinx. Uh, we can use it uh, with Sp Sphinx plugin Autodocs or Sphinx Auto API. Uh, also, uh, by doclint, offer me to check errors if I forget something to update in doc strings. And my favorite things, doc strings collapsible. And for example, types or uh, decorators is not collapsible in my IDE. And Pinkie Pie and Applejack also agree we should use uh, doc strings in normal form. And right now, if I throw a global overview on YAML generation pipeline in company, uh, you can see we have on entry a routing table and one route uh, um, offer us to go to YAML generator. And YAML generator goes deeper in every service and ask route from YAML generator from a uh, single service. And single service goes through uh, all uh, endpoints and calls method, uh, request with method options and collect YAMLs only for uh, for uh, only from every endpoint. And it works. It's scalable. Important is you can see the schema is uh, duplicated itself. And in this case, YAML generator, the code from YAML generator, we, you can uh, reuse code from YAML generator. And this is really uh, funny and interesting, and we avoid this fight with different uh, setup uh, in FastAPI or in Django REST framework and with Django Spectacular. Uh, it's easy, and if I throw, uh, collect some summary, I, in my talk I offer you to think about open API documentation, it's important, it's used for uh, different goals. The existed open API YAML generator uh, or generators or process to generate a standard um, automatically generated YAML, this process is pretty, pretty complex and I offer you to make it easier. Uh, unified way to collect YAML files uh, uh, on each level, it can reduce complexity, can help you to reuse code from YAML generator, and options method can be used to generate documentation only from one, for one single entry point or endpoint. It's really uh, easy for developers after uh, send option and get YAML file only for this entry point. I, I, I like it because previously, I should uh, download whole YAML file and select uh, something. And at last, if we use uh, standard doc strings, we use it not only for documentation, also uh, we use it to generate YAML file. And doc strings linters can also help us to, to be better with uh, YAML file generation. I wish you happy with your documentation. 
Uh, all code you can find, uh, all slides you can find by uh, uh, this link. And yeah, right now I'm open for your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, if you have any question, you can move to microphone. Also, you can ask in the Discord channel. Yes, I have a question. Um, I saw that you, you had that YAML composer uh, for uh, that's that well uh, that was uh, after the root uh, 53. Um, so the the master YAML composer kind of is. I guess it's also uh, running in a separate service, right? Or is it? Exactly. Uh, right now, uh, YAML composer which use uh, a router table, it it works like standalone service. Yeah, indeed. That only does that that kind of thing, or does it do more things than that? Once more. Does does it do only that kind of thing, or does it more things than than only that? Um, in this case, uh, we reuse server to generate uh, to generate uh, YAML. Uh, from different services, and the same uh, service we use to generate YAML file from different ent uh, entity points. And in this case, this server should be tested, but uh, we tested only one time for multiple uh, goals. If I correct, understand your question. Sorry. Okay, thanks. Yeah, welcome. Uh, my question would be that if you have an endpoint, sorry, if you have an endpoint which uh, support uh, underpass like uh, slash user, uh, slash Bob, slash user, slash Alice, then uh, a handler which is uh, responsible for slash users and the uh, sub pass, how the doc string should handle this. So if the pass is multiple, but the endpoint has one single doc string, doc string should have some structure to indicate multiple pass or how do you overcome this issue? Um, every endpoint, uh, for us, um, for example, uh, we have users dot number two or users mm, slash uh, number three, three. This is a long way, different, uh, different um, parts of URL, but uh, YAML file generated for us uh, standard documentation for this route. And uh, some there you should have one handler. This handler uh, uh, has, uh, for example, post or uh, or patch or delete, and also option. It's standard, and this option generate uh, for any handler uh, documentation. We should put documentation in handlers for request methods. If I right understand what you ask, or probably you can ask me later uh, yes, personally. We can. Okay. we can use it. Please. Hi. Hey, so thanks for the talk. I had two quick questions, two quick, I think. Uh, the first one is, uh, since you're compiling every YAML from each endpoint, uh, you, how do you handle models that are present in multiple um, endpoints? Because one of the one of the plus of OpenAI is the open, uh, open API, sorry, uh, is that you can reference models, do it once, and have it multiple version of the same model will have impact on server generation or code site generation. How do we handle that? Uh, in, this case, uh, in this case, we generate uh, models from current, uh, from current project, and I already marked, uh, if you use the other version of this model in any other entry point, yeah. uh, you should uh, use for a model name in YAML file some prefix. Other case, this model should be uh, should be uh, should be squashed together. So if you got a model that is used in two different endpoints, the and the result in the YAML will be only one reference. Uh, if you have one model, the same model with the same name, you have only one model. But if the different models with the same name, you should prefix it at uh, sure, sure. names, and you should have two models. Thank you. And if I can, a, a quick second question. Uh, you talk about using HTTP options, and I think it's a great idea, but in the end, option is not super used, but it's still used, like for example, to handle course or stuff like that. So don't you think doing 
that the way you describe mm. right, have an impact? Uh, yeah, uh, answer is uh, still, uh, uh, the question is still open. Yeah. Right now I speak only about description for standard HTTP, HTTPS methods. Uh, for example, uh, socket, uh, sockets, web sockets, uh, m m for documentation web sockets, we should uh, provide generation of a s uh, static YAML file, and after that, uh, compile this file on the higher level of YAML generation, like a static file from one server. Service. Uh, it, me it means without static files, it not works. <laughs> Okay. Some uh, some services can provide only static f static YAML file, which you should <laughs> change manually. Thank you and thank you for uh, the for your All presentation. All right, thank you so much for your participation and questions. Thank you so much for your presentation. Now it is lunchtime. Also, poster presentations you can find in exhibition hall. Also, you can find Maxim there because he can also be in exhibition hall. Okay, thanks so much for everything. So accept this small gift from us. Thank you. <laughs>